Thank you. Thank you that I have the chance to be here. So when I was asked about speak about breaststroke swimming, we see on the or you saw actually now on the track balance. I'm not actually coming from breaststroke swimming. We have a lot of athletes like Nietling, Alzheimer, Volker, the more freestyler backstroker. But obviously the last years more and more breast swimmers coming to me. Not just Van der Berg, we have Giulio Zorzi, we have, we have now actually Fabio Scozzoli and um, some good level athletes but shown that obviously breaststroke swimming is a bit different in my point of view or maybe different what is the standard of coaching breaststrokers. The idea of that presentation today is more to work out is Cameron van der Berg, a guy who won since 2009 on each competition, like 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, every year two medals. He won not always, but at least he made a medal in 50 and 100 meter on any high performance gala. Is that a role model for a breaststroker? Or can we take something out of his physique, out of his training, out of whatever, um, to get a better understanding about breaststroker's needs. So I would like to take you to a process to work out what is the breaststroke swimming, what are the international requests to be fast. So we're working with a lot of data. We are working, uh, I always show you what Cameron did, and then we try to, to get an idea about what was in the final in Barcelona, what brought us the final in London. So at the end of the day, maybe we have a better picture about breaststroker's needs. The name of the presentation is aerobic stimulants training. But um, at first I would like to introduce my second, oh, my, actually my partner, Miro Zerovica. That guy, because you will see these lot of huge numbers of data we have to deal with, that guy, <coughs> worked for Croatia Swimming. Now he's actually the head coach in Berlin at the National Training Center. He was a European champion, 50 back, took 99. So he's coming out of the high performance view um, for the last 15 years. And we are very, very similar in our point of view. He had a couple of years with Mike Bottom and, and some other international guys. So that guy, is also standing behind this presentation. So what I said, before we starting a bit about, about the physique, then we're trying to, to see some conclusion out of the London final, how old these guys are, how big the guys, whatever. Then I will speak just briefly about the principles of sprint training, about the 100 meter philosophy. And then we're coming down to actually to show you some different programs we made in the different cycles. So we go through the season, Olympic season, and go to the Barcelona season. After that, we are actually going very deep in these data. I will show you a lot of science data about frequencies, stroke lengths, and whatever, and then we can get something out of that. Okay, aerobic stimulants training. I can see it here, actually. Everybody now in the world of swimming is talking about how we can do our training more efficient. What part of the training we can take out and what are the really needs. So we, our target is to have a much better energy store and restore in the muscle cells. Also, we obviously looking for time frame for, 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 for enough time to do, um, to do this um, gym training, dryland training, to do more drills, because technique, the technical part, is becoming more and more important on this particular time. This obviously meet, mean that we are not talking about one program. I never speak about just that program. I would like that to get the idea of the program because I believe the approach for any swimmer must be different. 
and we have a lot of colleagues that are just running programs. For me, a program is a working paper, a working paper following the individual needs. So, and obviously, we are trying to, to skip, I named it here, garbage mileage, because I believe a lot of guys from you coming out of swimming and a lot of coaches just repeating what they did when they have been athlete as well. So, what is the meaning to do for Cameron Vandenberg, for example, 10 400s? Is 10 400s necessarily for him or not? That's the question. And I believe to take out this garbage mileage, that is one of the biggest things in swimming, to be more efficient. The point of this aerobic capacity is um, that we can just influence these before athletes are fully so, um, physiologically developed. What we can't influence, obviously, is the, is the amount of blood per one heart rate, and what we actually can't develop after athletes are developed. We can't the blood vessels in the muscles. So actually, that is what we have to deal with. So and that is what we need. We need a great network of blood vessels in the muscles that actually the energy is coming to the muscles. But the problem is always, what are the basics I need to be a good athlete? What kind of basement training is, is, is asked for when you are a young athlete and when you're becoming older? Can you do the same program what Cameron is doing in the age of 14 or 13? Or does we not need a different program? So here, quickly, to see what we named um, ASD training. Instead of 4 by 800, I rather prefer to do sets like 4 by 4 200s. Because obviously, 4 200s are enough to make the full aerobic stimulation. And um, after we're crossing the line to the aerobic zone, um, we are just attacking too much the energy store inside the muscle cell, and we are not actually working on our target. So the idea of that training is really to split sessions down, inputs down. So a specific training. Here's just a typical set. Like um, the main set, is, um, it's actually 400 meter freestyle. You see the heart rate. 25 fast, 75 easy, then a bit drills, and 100 freestyle at the end with a bit higher, higher aerobic, um, higher intensity. So you have a set, you have a set of 1,600 meter easy, 800 meter drills, 400 meter aerobic. So we're trying to mix up, not completely mix up, but we're not doing this kind of block trainings eight weeks, 10 weeks, just aerobic. Then the next four weeks, just that training, and the next four weeks, just, just this training. So what we are trying and what we leave in, just mixing up under the headline of our specific program. Next one, pace, uh, race pace training. Race pace training, you see, main set is here 30, 25 with maximum, no breathing, 75 easy. So this training is not more than 600 to 800 meter, and it's enough to stimulate the aerobic apparatus and not to disturb energy level. Everything what my message is now, if you have been a swimmer or if you have swimmer, to let a guy like Vanderberg or Scott Soli or these sprinters, let them swim long distance. We're coming to the point, aerobic program, we're coming to the point that the training is not efficient anymore because just they're crossing the lines and then we're not even on the on our target so um so I must do it like here huh? yeah okay taper 850s 650s 450s 125 a typical taper program with coming more and more in the race speed things um obviously individual approach, especially in the taper, we know that between four weeks and five weeks, the muscle cells need to recover. So our tapering is around, our main focus tapering is around three, four weeks long. And um, 
We just want to stimulate the aerobic apparatus and leave enough in the muscle cells to reach the full recovery. So coming, coming to Cameron Thunderbird, this just was the introduction of that. I'm running a bit through that because we have just one hour time. So it's just um, something for Cam, where he's born. He's not anymore right because he's not anymore the world record holder 50 breaststroke. Actually, Pete took that part in at the European Championship. But you see, he on 50 meter and 100 meter short course and long toss, he believed to the at least world record holder or believed to the two fastest guys ever. I want to show you something. Yeah. Now it's coming up. Uh, that one. Now we have to go down, please. That is Olympic Games London swimming. We saw now about Cameron's age. More down, more down. Go more down, please. Down. More, 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 more. It's coming to 100 breast. 100 breaths, up, 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 yeah, and stop. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. So that's the 100 meter breast man, that is 100 breast woman. That is just the age, age of the guys, the high of the guys. The idea was to understand, is Van der Berg the role model, yes or no? We will see. T24. You see the now the body height and you see the body weight. Actually, that one is wrong. That is actually 84 kilogram by Cameron. So if you're going down more to 200 meter, please go down more. That's the 200 meter thing. Go on the back stroke. Now to on the breast stroke. Stop. You would you will actually see. Ah, now you, you will see that the breaststrokers, the average medal age is 23. The, the, the average age for the, for the finalists from 4 to 8 is 25. That the youngest guys, the younger guys on the 200 meter are actually more delivering. That the 200 meter swimmers are younger than the 100 meter swimmers. That even the, the weight and the, and the height are different. Now please come back to the presentation. So we have to jump between PDF and we have to jump between the presentation thing. Next one. So here I, I try to get it. The 100 meter breast strokers are older than the 200 meter breast strokers, so 25 to 23, 4. They are longer, they're larger, 186, 185, heavier as the average one. Now come back. So it was me. Sorry, go. Yeah. They're heavier than 200 meter. Medal winner are actually younger than the rest of the final. You can see it here. 21, tw slightly younger. Body height and body weight, all disciplines are very similar. So 200 meter and 100 meter swimmers are obviously slightly different, but um, the take out of that special age and a special um, special high. Now we come to that point. So that was Cameron's performance development. That thing is long course, that is short course. So he started, oh, it's very bad here, oh, okay. He started age of 16 with 30 and 2012 he came down to 27. The 100 press he came down to 105. Every year he made a step down to 58.4. I believe a lot of approach is a touching a perfect 100 meter race. You need speed, you need speed endurance, you need aerobic, you need racing strategy. Training's background. Are you coming like Scott Soli from a different background as Vandenberg? So Scott Soli needs a different, different approach in training because he's much more coming from the swimming point as Vandenberg. But in any, in any case, Sorry, I'm just not familiar with that. In any case, the main, the main keyword for pool swimming and especially for, for, for breaststroking is speed availability. You have to get the race, you have to get the speed under control. 
You have to get the frequency, you have to get the stroke length under control. Everything is ending up in speed availability. So the whole game, what I said before, aerobic capacity, speed endurance, speed, technical capacity, and that's the reason why we're always trying to reduce the training out of garbage mileage. We are trying to reduce the training out of mileage what is not beneficiary. So I, uh, I believe the same as a lot of other, especially for, the, for, for breast soccer and a lot of physical fitness. So gym, weightlifting, running like Dwyland become a different, different um, importance. So just to give you an idea about what, what he did. So we have here the 2011, 2012 season, like the Olympic season, that was the season. This is the season, the Barcelona season. First macro cycle, so you see we're dividing the season in three blocks. Almost the first block is starting after the major event, the season before, to, to, to winter, actually to now. The second block is going from January to April. The last block is starting from April to the major event. You can see the, 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 the first one was here, 130 days, 107 days, 105 days. So after Olympic, you had a lot of things to do, just 55 days on the first part, and then these second macro cycles are very similar. So, so our week schedule, just that. I believe in the, in the game of hard work and relief. We are not doing every day pushing, pushing, pushing. We're doing Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, the hard swimming sets actually at night, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, the gym set. If we are running on the gym set, the gym, the weightlifting is the most important part of that because physical fitness is the integral part of the whole strategy. Okay. So just to give you now for um, an overview that the first macro cycle is a, bit, a different way of showing you. I believe in short cycles, micro cycles, out of five, six weeks. Any of these, I must always check, any of these cycles starting here and going to the first regeneration. Oh, shit, sorry for this. So, here starting the first macro cycle, and then this is the first regeneration. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks. Then the next one is one, two, three, four weeks. So. I'm not doing 10, 12, 14 weeks cycles. We're dividing these macro cycles in four, five, six week cycles. Every, every one of these cycles is built up like a little season. So we're starting any cycle again with the aerobic work, then aerobic capacity, then, then some, uh, some lactate work, and we're ending up with a regeneration kind of tapering, pre tapering in the middle of the season. Too long cycles, too long micro cycles, tiring, and we're not anymore on the same physical standard to be on the target what we would like to achieve. So, because we are a bit short of time, this is out of, a, so this is always a different cycle. This is now the macro cycle number three. It is still the same procedure. We always try to to make after four or five weeks regeneration, then again four or five weeks next regeneration. To take it out, it looks actually like that. 2011, 2012, you see here, always coming up, down regeneration, up, down regeneration, up, down regeneration. It's always, always a balance between recovery and hard work. So, end of the day, the key of success, it is not a hard work. Because hard work is compulsory. Everybody's doing a hard work. If an athlete is telling me, hey, I work so hard, everybody's working hard. The key of success is obviously the balance between hard work and relief. So you have to figure out, and that was the solution for Thunderbird, that after four, five, six weeks, he need one week to recover. And recover means really recover to come down. And the next positive part of that idea is that Thunderbird get a feeling to deal with recovery, deal with taper. 
And it's so difficult to, when you're the whole year in maximum training, you're always loading, loading, loading. And it's very difficult then to start with the, rec with the recovery, with the tapering, tapering, because then you feel down, then you feel really messy, you feel heavy, and everything is worse. So that kind of program is helping him to get a much more sensitive idea about his season plan. So just, say, just showing you the same thing for the 2013 um, season. You will see the same, but even for the first macro cycle, he was not really in training. Same thing, same thing. So that is the, the result. This is the London, London season 2012, 2013. So you can see he swam in 20, 2012, 1,700 kilometer and 160 hours of gym. In 2013, the Barcelona season, obviously five, 600 kilometer less and more, uh, actually just 50%, 46% less in gym. Under that perspective, it is more understanding his Barcelona results because of you not put as much work on that. So, to give you an idea about more about, as at, as at the beginning, to give you an idea more about breaststroke sets, what kind of sets we did, aerobic sets. Everybody believed even Thunderbird or now Scott Soli, they're just sprinting every day. No, we're doing also classic sets. Five, eight hundreds, four hundred IM, four, one hundred breasts. 10, 400, 300 back press, 3, 100 press. Always underline is more attention. It's not mean full speed, it's just that it's attention. Here, 3 of 4, 200s with 200 easy. It's actually a 3,000 meter set here, if you can see that thing. That one here is actually 150 press, 50 press a bit faster. That one, it is 500 meter, 200, 150. So it's a classic one, six by 500, 3,000 meter sets. So even Thunderberg is doing 3,000, 3,500 meter sets in breaststroke. I do not believe to cover up breaststroke swimming with freestyle, maybe with butterfly, but breaststroke is very specific, so we're doing a lot of breaststroke swimming. So here you can see it, I don't know if you can see it from there, but that's a week program, that's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. For you, may, that is a hard swimming part. Tuesday, that's another hard swimming part. Thursday and Saturday morning. So even he's coming around to 6K. Here actually 6.8, 7K, 14K a day, 11K a day. It's just a typical aerobic week with the same sets with what we spoke before. Turn rounds of 300 plus 100. And here this. 100 butterfly, 50 breasts, 100 back breasts. So you see, it's a classic one. So for lactate tolerance, what we're doing for that? You see much more speed, but also classic ones. For sure, I mean, this is 10 100s, 10 50s, 10 25s. When 25 fast, 25 easy. Three watt of six, 1875s, speeding in, target, ending up at 46. 46 long course at a speed of 102. So actually I'm pushing him and these guys in the normal set coming down to a, to a, to a pace of 102 in the normal session. Four 100 press on six minutes, target 103.0. This also this classic one, what we are doing in Russia, in China, in Germany, wherever. 850s here, 850s on four minute, holding 28.2. So I'm looking very much for quality, quality in movement, quality in speed, quality in swimming. So I rather prefer to match these targets instead of pushing, tar pushing a program through. Even I see Thunderberg or the athletes, especially here, Thunderberg is not able to deliver that, that standard. Then I'm stopping the set and trying again, next day or one day later. As I told you, swimming, individual coaching is kind of working paper. Otherwise, we're not working through the program. We actually, we have, even as a coach, you have to feel the program, you have to feel the benefit for athletes. So, so you see, same just to, it's the next week, 
Tuesday again, Wednesday, Thursday, you have here four rounds of 15 meter fast, 100 meter medium, something 118, and the last 50 speeding in from 35 to 30. So always we are trying to deal with the race pace on any, on some stage of the race. So at the beginning of the season, we are dividing our perfect race, and we see that is our creation of that final race in London or wherever. So first 25, second 25, whatever, whatever. And then we're trying to simulate in the normal training, even in this Lacta training, what is for sure five, five, six, seven weeks before London, before the major event, I'm pushing him to, to, to do a 30 seconds from the push off in the 3000 meter press success. Next one, speed. Speed training is actually, um, a lot of people believe speed training is kind of, okay, we do some speed training, that's it. But the main question is, how much speed do you need? How much aerobic capacity do you need? How it's a kind of balance. If I'm pushing too much the aerobic capacity, the speed is coming down. If you're pushing too much speed, the, the aerobic capacity is going down. You must actually find a way, especially for a guy who make him, make him available to do that. So, something like this. Oh, sorry, it's not really, yeah, this one. Something like this here, 50 meter, 28.5, like that's the kind of first 50 meter and 100 meter race, short break on 50 seconds, on 50 seconds, and then a 13.5, like a finish on top. Oh, what you can see here, three, three fifteens with over, with over speed, very, very high frequency, and then coming, and then coming here on that part, this part, to 100 meter aerobic swimming. So always playing with frequencies, playing with positions, and playing with paces. Something like here. Six round, two times 15 seconds against the stretch cords with pedals to, have, to get a feeling for the muscles. And then after this one, um, because you're on that side, obviously if you're swimming, if you're swimming against the court, you are, you are in the middle of the pool, then 20 meter with assist back, have a nice frequency, take that thing off, rip the, rip the belt off, and do 125 all in. All right, okay. That one, just to get a better understanding of my work, but this is just a part, it is not what we're doing the whole season, but speed work is a, is a compulsory part of the normal session. 30 second holding breath, like head underwater, just eyes out, and then, after 30 seconds, he listened to hear signal, 25 all in, actually increasing from 14.5 to 13.2. So actually he had for 30 seconds no, no oxygen, and then he has to speed out of that. Same thing here. See the same kind of structure, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. We're coming down to 2,000 meter, 1,800, then it's actually coming very much down. At the, Olymp oh, shit, man. Oh. At the Olympics, that is the Olympic result. That was the heat semi-final. That is what we targeted before. I told you before the season we were speaking about what we are looking for. That are the results. Now you can see, and we will, we will touch that point later, um, how you have to pace a race. What is the modern way of racing strategy? But that idea, that ideas of targets and results, obviously everybody's doing that, thinking what is our target. So, and these targets here, these targets are actually our targets for the training. And if you would see, if you had time to go through every slide, you would see that 31.6, 31.8 was very often a target of the sets we went. And end of the day, the targets match the results very much. 59.7 was the target, 59.79 was that what, what you actually delivered. Okay, please go in that thing. Now we're starting with a very interesting part with a lot of data. Okay, hopefully you can see that. I will explain it. This is 100 Brits Olympic Games. That are first place, second place, whatever, yeah? 
first best fund that works, Springer. You see that one are the heat semis and finals. So he, sp he split the 27.2 on the heat with that, with that speed, 183, and he came home with 32.5, 31.3, 31.3. .3. That are the different be difference between heats and finals. Yeah. So if you see here, the difference between this and this is for uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.4 here. The difference between the, between the first 50 meter and the second 50 meter from 27 whatever to 32 is four seconds or here, five seconds, three seconds, four seconds. That one, difference between 50 meter lap and the 100 meter average speed. So the thinking is how much he's taking the first 50 meter if you see the average race speed, how much is he faster or how much is he falling apart on the last part? And you see here by Van der Berg, the first 50 meter he is around 8% over his 100 meter average and the second part he is around 6.8% behind his speed. Sprenger, as the as second guy, um, he was in the, in the finals 6.5 and obviously his loss on the second part was just 5.8, like 6% slower than his average pace. Okay, go more down please. Just a bit more down. Can I get another one? Stop it. So you see here, if we believe that the Hungarian program is a tough program and it actually Daniel Goethe is maybe of course, the best 200 meter swimmer in the last, whatever, 10 years. Even that guy wasn't faster. 30, he came home with 31.4, 31.5. 31, uh, 31 He's not actually faster coming home than the top guys. When in hand, and if you see up, actually Cameron van der Berg had the second fastest second 50 meter on this point um, on the last 10 years, whatever, maybe in history. You see, even a guy who is doing a lot, a lot, a lot of Hungarian-style mileage, even I don't know exactly what he did, I must say, but I believe so, I can... That guy actually wasn't as good. Um, you can see it here. Even here, he's very equal, yeah? The first, the first 50 is 5.4 percent of his 100, he was faster than the 100 meter average. The second part, he had around, also around 5 percent. Okay, come back to the presentation, please. Okay, okay. Um, so this is one, that one. So, same thing, same thing for, just briefly for, for Barcelona. Same procedure, now we can go quicker through. 59, 59.5, 58.6, six. that was the target. He delivered like that. He was pretty much on the, on the semi-final, but on the final he messed a bit because he went out maybe too fast, 26.8, was just a slide over the world record, but then he actually died the last part. And can you start this, that one? Sorry, that's over. Same procedure. First one was Springer, second one Van der Berg. If you see, if you see here, he's, what, what actually Springer did in the final in Barcelona, he actually split much faster as he split before. So his race pace at the beginning, he learned out of the race from Cameron in London, was much more aggressive for the first part. He was 7.4% over his 100 meter pace. So, and Van der Berg was actually 9.9 .9 because he understood in Barcelona. He asked me, coach, what should I do? How I can beat Springer? Because Springer already swam 59, zero, whatever, beginning of the year 2013 at some Australia meet, whatever, Australia gala. He said, how I can beat him? Because I'm not so much in training after Olympic. I said, the only weapon, the only tool you have, push him the first 50 meter, hope that he's going with you, or actually get away from him. And then after 75 meter, you must see how you're coming home. What happened, he started with 26.8, but obviously he died at the, at the end. So just to make it sure, 
Sprenger's tool was actually quite clever. He actually learned out of Thunderbird's race from the Olympics. Go more down, please. More down. More down, more down. You see, we have the, we made it for all of them. Actually, number 10, 11, 12. Ross Murdoch last year. This is Barcelona, I think. More down. I'm just thinking more down. Jameson. Okay. Come back to the presentation. So the, what I took out of, what I believe, what we can take out of that is that the, 50, uh, that the, that the race strategy going in a world championships race is really built up like that. That the top athletes trying to be pushing more and more the first 50 meter in, coming from the heats to the finals, and actually stay even, or actually come actually down on the second part of the race. It can be seen that the, that the highest, the highest, oh, so sorry, man, sorry. Sorry, sorry for that. There you go. That the highest growth rates are shown in the, what mean, <clears throat> the first, the, the top athlete usually is going out fast for the first 50 meter, holding, this, holding the third 25 meter, and the last 25 meter, we'll see it later, that even the medal winner, not the fastest guys in the race, the last 25 meter, not the medal winners are leading the data. They're not the fastest guys. So obviously the race, the decision of the race, so the 100 meter race, is done in the first three quarters of the race. Okay, again please. We must go in that thing. Sorry, now a lot of data because I want to show how Thunderbird did it and how the rest is doing that. Okay. Can you go inside? Because PDF is always, then we can go around, up and down, and that thing. So, wait. So, again, that is Barcelona result. That's Barcelona, 100 breaststroke men. That are the gold medal. The first 50 meter split was 27, um, yeah, 100 meter breast. In the heats, same is in finals. So, for the gold medal winner, he made in the first 50 meter 27.8, the medal winner 27.85. He came home with 31.6, medal winner and average 32.0. In final, he actually started with 27.3. The medal winner actually started a bit faster because of Vandenberg and, and Lima, I think. And um, so that part, he can take home 31.9. You see that the place number four to number eight had a faster sec second 50 meter in average as the, as the medal winner in average. You understand? Number four, five, six, seven, eight. The average speed was faster than from the medal winner, second part was actually supporting, I guess, my idea. Um, go down, please. Stop it. Yeah. That is the 50 meter, oh, what is this over? The lap and the split. So that, that's the speed for the first 50 meter in the heat from the gold medal winner. That's the speed of the second 50 meter. He came down to one, 169. Over the, over the whole 100. So 170, 171. So the medal winner at the first, uh, the, the pace for the, the speed, meter per second for the first 50 meter, 180, then 180, and then 184. Go much down, please. Wait, 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 wait okay. Stop it, stop it, stop it. A little more up. No, more down, sorry, more down. I need to see that one. Yeah. So, that point. Difference between the first, the first and the left end was 13.5, 14.7, 14.7. So, what's, what's seen that 
The gold medal winner won it on the last part of the race. The medal winner are here, and here are number four to number eight. Actually, the percentage is faster than that one. Go more down. Yeah. So we had this one, stop it. We had this one before. We had, this, we had that one before. That is the 50 meter lap time in relation to the 100 meter average pace. So again, gold medal winner, he went out 7.3 faster than the 100 meter average speed and he came home 6.4 slower. Otherwise, the medal winner, Van der Berg Lima, they went out here with 8.9, much faster, and then they died a bit. Here, the place, you can see it always that the rest of the finals are actually faster. More down, please. Okay, this is already the, the, the splits again. We have not as much time. That's from a different presentation. More down. Stop. More up. So, here, swimming underwater. Again. That is the underwater swimming distance. That, that, that <coughs> that's the distance how long the gold medal winner was underwater, like 13.7 meter. The medal winner, 13.4 meter, that is number place. So the distance they made was more than less the same. But actually, gold medal winner was a bit longer underwater. Um, the underwater speed. Obviously, the speed after, underwater swimming after start, average speed was actually higher for the number four to number eight than the medal winner. But underwater distance after, underwater swimming distance after turns, medal winner longer than that one. Medal winner more than that one. After turns, the speed after turns. Underwater swimming, uh, the speed. Medal winner, 1.78, 1.78, so they're coming the same speed out of the turn. But medal winner are longer, more distance underwater. Go down. You can see it even better here in the, oh, sorry, here in the final. You can see it here in the final. Uh, go up. Go up, please. So stop. <laughs> so that's the final. You can see it even better here. So the, the point out of that is that medal winner are usually longer under the water. Even the swimming speed is not as high. They have a longer pull down after the turns. And that brings them to the higher speed, to the better times. So swimming underwater is obviously a significant part of a medal winner that the distance and everything is longer, yeah, more distance as a, as a, number four to number eight. Go more down, please. Stop it. More down. Okay, now, now we split it, all the finals here. More down. It is just, stop. That is just saying, saying here that, that actually there's the split times in the finals, the speed times in the finals, but we don't need them now for that presentation. Okay, change back, please. Okay, so, so what we can take out of that, the first three, also the first medal winner, the first three, the 25 meter faster than the average finalist, and 75 meter to 100 meter, the non-finalists are faster than the medal winner. The underwater distance by medal winner is higher, what is showing the importance, the importance of the starts and turns. The reaction times of medal winner are quicker than average finals. The last 25 meter, the last 25 meter here, the last 25 meter, um, finalists are even better than the medal. So the, the last meter before the turn, the last meter um, on the finals. Medal winner have a high average frequency, have a higher frequency, even the stroke length much higher. So it seemed to be that the target for a perfect race, what I took out of that is 12.4, 27.4, and then splitting by 
a 43-0. Yeah, okay, that was this one. So, that one. Go on that. Go on, go on this thing in. I told you a lot of, lot of numbers, but maybe it's a bit boring, but it can show you what we need for that. Okay, I can read it from here always. So that's the Barcelona, 100 breaths. So very similar to now. Go more down. Go more up, please. Yeah, I need this one. I need, I need that one. Go more up. I think this one. Yeah. Stop it. So that is what, what, what we saw here. You can see it on, 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 on one view. Underwater distance, and one after turns. What I said, after turns, 9.9 meter for the medal winner, also for the gold medal, 9.89 for them. For the finalists, 9.6 meter. Yeah. Underwater, yeah, so. Okay, go more down. So, that, that is what now? Okay, that. <coughs> But that's actually the thing, what, what, we, what we touch again, what we touch already, that is, that is the same. That's the reaction time, that's the first 25 meter, the first 15 meter, sorry. That's the speed. Yeah, go more down. Yeah. So that, actually I would like to explain you, you can see it on, on a lot of, Data like here, that almost the medal winner at the beginning of the race, coming with a higher speed, with a longer distance, where they're deciding a race very early. More down. More down. More down. I need to see. Show you another one. More down. Sorry. 25 meter in split times. More down. You see, we, we, we from the different points. Yeah. That is one meter cycle frequency. Finals, here's the finals. So that's the frequencies, yeah? Everybody's working with frequencies. I can't see it from here. But um, that's the metal winner you see here. They're coming in with a higher frequency. Metal winner with 50, gold metal winner here. They have a slightly higher frequency than the non-metal winner. So obviously, the racing strategy, the pacing strategy is based on the first part of the race. They're able to have a, um, the higher frequency and the longer stroke rate. If we're coming down now, it must supposed to show us the stroke rate. Cycle, yeah, cycle rate, here. We said they have a higher frequency, and now we're coming to the stroke rate, like how much meter distance they're making per stroke. And you see here, finalist, or the semi-final, final, yeah. Gold medal winner has a, has a stroke rate of 206, 212. Yeah, I must actually see the thing. So, go more down. Pacing strategy, this is just, just more, more data. I want to show more down. That one. Height, weight, up. So, that, that is, uh, I, we brought everything together in this, in that slide. What is actually saying? For the final. These are the golden one are the medal winner. You see after 25 meter, already three medal winner under the first thing. After 50 meter, already the first three medal winner here. After 75 meter, the first three medal winner after here. The three medal winner here. So what I want to say is obviously a strong, strong point to be at the beginning of the race under the under the top four guys, otherwise the chance to win a race is very low. On a 100 meter race, you must actually mainly work on your start, on your turn, on your breakout and on your speed of your breakout, otherwise your, your chance to be under the top three medal winner is very low. Go more down. More down. Finish, yeah? Okay, go back. So I think that that document is showing pretty clear that the technical point of a race changed. We're not actually looking more for sprint events. 
for even speed for the first 50 meters, second 50 meters. Come back to the documentation, please. We are looking more to get as much speed as beginning as possible and then to try to push that speed to the end of the race and try to hold it, maintaining it as long as possible. So, Wagon will have a very, very high initial speed by dives and turns, with what we saw. The first 50 meter second medal winner much faster than the rest. And medal winner actually are able to reduce the loss of speed during the transition. So what we can take out of that? I believe the change of our, of our um, racing suits. Remember, when we came to these special racing, racing suits a couple of years ago in Rome in 2008, 2009, a lot of people saying, no, the change, the tactical change is just because of the suits. People are not scared for the second 50 meter because they believe they can hold it, they can maintain it. But when we come back to the normal suits, everything will be as usual. More even speed is used. But more not even speed is used. Yeah? We are actually, we see it in freestyle, we see it in backstroke, and we see it a lot in breaststroke. The speed element is becoming more and more important. Because of speed, you need a consequence, you need the result in training, and because of the result in training, more speed oriented, you need more physical fitness. So the racing actually is giving the main guidance of the season. It is not anymore that, what I said, that, you, that you're doing one major race, for example, at the World Championships, and then you go in 10 different training camps and come one year later back and do another race. When I see Dutch swimming, the girls, or see whatever, Australia, they are more and more have a high numbers of very good racing results. So your racing ability your speed ability must be high over the whole season. So on that is the impact of the training structure. We are not dealing anymore with these long cycles of aerobic input, especially not for sprinters. We are just doing some reloads, short reloads. Actually, we're going to altitude doing a two weeks of or three weeks of aerobic reload, and then we're coming back to the intensity part. So we are trying to reduce the amount of meter and try to let these garbage mileage, because the mileage is not beneficiary for us. We're trying to keep them out because we have to spend more time on drills and on dry land. High speed, especially in breast and butterfly, need a very good physical fitness. So the relevant training tools are race speed, race technique, and race frequency. If that are the main tools, we have to deal with that even in training. It doesn't make sense to deal in training with just training pace, training, um, training technique, and training frequency. We always have to touch the racing part of our target, even in a normal training session. That is becoming to the next point. Everybody is talking about making training more beneficial, more efficient, more intensity. Oh, there's something missing, okay. More intensity. But the real key, if you're working on the high intensity, is the recovery. Hard work and intensity work, it's a, it's a common thing in modern swimming. But the point is to find the right, po the right point to jump out of the hard training. So the art of coaching, it's becoming more and more important. You need dedicated athletes to have to understand that. You need athletes to understand after four or five weeks of training, they already have to swim fast because of we need this race approach thing, race tactic, race tactic, race speed, and race frequency. You have to learn to read your athletes. Not actually the sports science is a very important tool, but the end of the day is the art of coaching um, that important thing, and you must be tough enough to ignore sometimes these science rules because athletes always sending message. But for that one, you need you need um, you need the athlete what is actually keen enough and willing enough to train. Not that the athlete say no, I'm not interested, whatever. It's a very thin ice you're working on. It's a very it's a very communication with your athlete. 
So I believe the, the next, the next actually performance key, if you see it from the, from, from, from the past, when you, when you say in the 80s was more the mileage coming up, then in the 90s, beginning of the 90s, mileage and strength, like power, then the, then the, 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 um, the, um, the strong, also the physical fitness came, but the future thing I really believe is the frequency. The racing frequency, the dynamic move, the dynamic technique in the normal training, that is the part I believe what the future is bringing good results. You see I have one hour for that presentation. It was a lot of data in that presentation, so I have to keep something out, but just give you an idea. What we can take out of that preparation, or out of this presentation, I believe was that um, different approach for different people. Actually trying to get for a breaststroker more a speed, a more physical approach as a long distance approach. I'm not speaking for a 200 meter swimmer, I'm speaking for a 50 and a 100 meter swimmer because the documents, the data are clean showing, clearly showing that the speed is coming in very, very much, very much pushing. So you must be able to maintain it. Better you have a guy who's swimming 35 meter or 40 meter, very good. And not pushing and say, okay, now we have to put you in a 200 meter program that you deliver some one day on 100 meter as well. So based on this 200 meter thing, I would always prefer if I would have a guy for 35 meter, 40 meter to maintain, bring, this, bring that speed on 50 meter, bring that speed on 60 meter, 65 meter. Instead of turning him around upside down and try to make a 200 meter swim out of him just to make sure that the last 10 meter is not dying. The last 10 meter is not the, the key part of the race. Last 10 meter, even medal winner, not faster than the, than the average, average finalist. Last 10 meter, the whole thing is done. First 40, first 80 meter, first 40 for the first 50, and then maybe 75 meter, that are the keys. And you can, if you do it on freestyle, the same, on butterfly, it's more than less the same. I can just tell you, you, you can't, I, I can prove it, but um, I can just tell you because you haven't seen it. I would say 80%, this is my point, but 80% on any stroke of a 50 on a 100 meter rise is winning by guys who are leading the first 25 meter. So when you're not even able to swim the first 25 meter on the same level, on the same standard as a medal winner, obviously your chance to make a medal is just coming down to 20%. So coming back to the beginning, speed availability, technique and based on frequency and physical fitness. That is on that part, most relevant thing. I'm not talking about 200 freestyle, 400 freestyle, 1500, whatever. I'm speaking about that, but even in 1500 freestyle, you see on Chinese guys or whatever, they are very fast. They swim the first 100, the last 100 in the 1500 meter race, one minute 50. A time, one minute 50 for 200 meter, what was five, six, seven years ago, a good 200 meter performance. These guys doing it first 100 and last 100 in the middle, they're swimming 59 to 100 meter in average. So speed and pool swimming is a relevant part. The really clear aerobic capacity moved out to the open water swim. I'm not speaking about low training and little training. I speak about a lot training, but a lot of relevant training. Thanks for that. That was the presentation, that was my idea to breaststroke talk swimming. So try to keep your, uh, your breaststrokers longer under the water, try to make them faster first part, then the chance to win a race is much higher. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dirk. Very interesting presentation. Same questions, please raise your hands. Uh, thank you for this your presentation. Just I have uh, you mentioned last uh, things you would say that eighty percent from your swimmers uh, lead the race, uh, which is 
who are leading the 20, first 25 meters, which I believe is, it is true, but what I think is you spend the rest of your year plan focusing on uh, speed endurance and endurance. That's why in the end of the day, they will lead the first uh, 25 uh, meters, which is, I believe. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you for that. Again, the point, okay, we named it, and you maybe to say now a different name, easy speed or light speed. You must be capable as an athlete to get in in this easy speed. It is slightly under full speed, but it's still comfortable. You must go through the first part of the race with a comfortable high speed to give your race the stamp. You have to keep the race under control. And that is the point that we are doing the whole year, if I got your question right. But anyway, that is the point we are looking for, this easy speed. Easy high speed, comfortable high speed. And if you would like to have this comfortable high speed, you must work a lot in the year on this zone of high quality training. Hello. Uh, I have two questions. The first of all is, uh, what about the uh, recovery week? What do you do in this week? And the second question is, what about junior or youth level? If uh, Do you think uh, this uh, week for recovery, it works for them, or uh, maybe they may... Okay. Uh, okay. Well, thank, you. thank you. First part for recovery week. The idea of the recovery was actually, I must come back to the point, that for Van der Berg, for example, now that guy, for him training more than five weeks, six weeks is impossible. He spent, a, okay, sorry, hello, yeah. Van der Berg actually spent some months in Japan, I saw for sure some Japanese guys are here, he couldn't get it. He came back to me and said, Dirk, I can't, I can't do this long without, for him, without not really balanced training because it is too much, too much work. I have no time to recover. I'm going down, down, down. I'm, my, my, my power is going down, everything going down. So what we do in the recovery week, we're doing very e little swimming. We, we still keep in gym. We're doing two gym sessions, actually hard gym sessions, but the swim is coming very down to give him the chance to reload his body. But it's always the same thing. When I did this same thing with Scott Soli or with some other guys, <coughs> after the first one, first recovery week, they're saying, Jack, why are we doing recovery? After the first, after one week recovery, my feeling is completely shit. I'm completely off because the body is changing then. Same as taper, the taper hold. So, but when they run through that process a couple of times, then when we're coming to a major event like now, they're much more keen and ready and understand the physiologic, um, okay, the, 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 the development or actually the, the reaction of the body. They're much better understanding that thing. So they have, they're much more sure in the last part of the, of the season planning because they went a couple of times for the recovery. So hard gym, keeping and very easy swimming, very little swimming, maybe like 15 kilometers per week for him or different people are different. Junior athletes, we have actually junior athletes, also breaststroker like Nikola Oprovac. I, I coach him from 2012 as a Croatia guy to two, actually to now, and he won last year at the, in China this junior world thing, what it was, uh, the 50 breast, even he's two years younger than other guys. So I coach him age of 14. I got him age of 14. I did similar approach, but not as much on the high quality, but I always try to make ensure that these on dynamic move and the technique is actually race orientated. So I, do, I did the same, I did the same like hard work, easy work, recovery, loading work, reloading work, but um, I not did it as hard as with Thunderberg or these guys. So the idea is to, and there's the next point, when you're young, 14, 15, I believe, you, and you, if, you, if your coach is using the, the, the wrong track, question what kind of foundation you need as a swimmer, but you can knock down a swimmer very much. If that guy's a sprinter and you let him train as a marathon athlete four or five years, and then at the age of 15, 16, 16 years, he should come up as a sprinter. It's not working. 
got the last, last four or five years he worked as a marathon athlete. So actually, I always try to be very sensitive, but sticking on the same kind of philosophy, balancing. Back. Dirk, uh, this data that you showed us, uh, it's very interesting. Uh, I imagine that you collected it yourself, or is it available somewhere? No, actually we collected, actually that was the reason why this Miro guy, and we actually worked on that, it was a lot of work behind that. But if you need something, for sure, I can give you some of this. Yeah. But it's a I, lot of work. I would be excited to get some of it to analyze. Thank you. Um, thank you for your presentation. It was very good. Um, when you are doing the speed uh, training, especially for Cameron, who was a breaststroker, do you concentrate mainly on his main stroke, that is a breaststroke, or you, it's a combination of all the strokes? And again, just before the Olympics, how long was uh, the tapering uh, period? Thank you. Okay, um, obviously that was a presentation for, for, for Vandenberg. Um, how long was it was the tapering? Um, the tapering, because we're running through the post and I believe in racing. So usually we do some racing before the major event. I do not believe in non-racing and go to a major event. So actually I believe in racing, not always full speed racing, but kind of preparation racing. So the tapering was more than less like just three weeks. Because of we are we going to that um, to, to that galas on, on the high standard, but any race was not always full speed. Any race was a kind of target behind. Or try the first 25, try the last 25, try to catch the frequency of the first 50, try to f catch the frequency, the racing frequency from the games on the last 25 meter. So we just put a full speed race together like a puzzle at the Olympics at the final. We never did one full speed race until the Olympic finals. And even we did that, the target was to a sub one minute, to whatever, to 59.567 at the Mare Nordstrom, still under this circumstances that we have some different sub targets. Okay, what was the first question? <laughs> that was actually the question, yes. Mm -hmm. So that, that's it. So the tapering was more than less like three weeks, but based on racing. You said that you said that you do five weeks of intense training, then one week of recovery. Is the five weeks that you are is the strength training the same on those five weeks that it is in his recovery week? Okay, <clears throat> that is not. <clears throat> you see, when we have this this is micro micro cycle or macro cycle, which we actually divided in a, in a couple of micro cycle. We are not, I always try to have these five weeks, four, five, this is actually the amount of days what actually beneficiary and I got that some people in this four to six weeks that is a common and a useful microcycle thing. I'm trying to run a little season in this six weeks. So I started even the first part when we starting with the, with the first microcycle of the season. We starting with aerobic and then we coming down in the fifth or sixth week already to speed work and was on the lactate work before. So, but if you're coming more and more to the major event, obviously the part is more race relevant, we're pushing more. So just the parts of it are changing. But we're always trying to reloading after four, five, six, what we did the, the cycle before, but with a different kind of main approach. So obviously the last part, the last microsite before the Olympic is more based on race speed, speed endurance, Actually, the first part of the microcycle at the beginning of the season is more based on aerobic capacity, but still as a speed as an integral part of everything. Two more questions, please. You didn't answer the question of the coach. You yeah. had the first one, if you are doing a training for breaststroke in breaststroke. Or okay, that was the one. Okay, sorry. How much I'm doing breaststroke? I believe in breaststroke training. So actually on our hard days, we're doing a lot of breaststroke. 
We're doing 3,000, 3,500 meter sets in breaststroke. I do not believe if you're swimming in breaststroke, you're improving in butterfly, whatever. I believe if you would like to improve in butterfly, you have to train butterfly. So even butterfly swimmers doing a lot of butterfly with me. Not necessarily 10 by 400 butterflies, but something like what I said before, we're splitting the, the sets down to make them available, actually make, make, make it possible for that guys. But we are doing actually 3,000 meter breaststroke sets. On the day in between, while we're doing easy, I have no problem if they're taking fins and pedals and doing an easy part of, I don't know, 10 to 100 uh, freestyle pulling pedals and fins. But always hard work and relevant work is done in the main stroke. Would mean for the backstrokers and butterfly always with 15, actually we always try 20 meter under the water. Even by 10, 100 butterfly or 100 plus 50, always 20 meter under the water, that the 15 meter under the water is supposed to be possible. Because we saw in breaststroke that the underwater thing, even in breaststroke, is very, very important. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, do you schedule your training meets, as you said, during the year, when you want to race during the year? Do you schedule your meets on your, let's say, recovery weeks, or it doesn't matter? No. I don't get, that's a good one. Actually, I'm trying to use on the end of the recovery weeks during going on a bigger competition. A bigger, I mean, in Europe, you have a lot of chance. That was my, 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 my problem when we have been in South Africa. But I try always to give them a chance on, on after recovery kind of test meeting, like Flandern Gala, Luxembourg, whatever, going, going to Norway or something. We're going to some galas, and actually the athletes have to get used on traveling and racing. There's a very, the beneficiary of the South African and the Australia athletes, they're used to travel. When I've been in Germany and we had traveled to whatever, just another city, just to France, Germans so much get tired. They say, oh, I can't swim because I was yesterday two hours in the train or whatever, two hours in the flight. So we're trying always to simulate, simulate of things. Even at the end of the season, our tapering, come back to that one, we are simulating heats and finals to give them the same kind of approach with different targets. Okay. Thank you very much, Thank you. Dirk. Very interesting. Thank you. And there is... Thank you.